Hey guys, happy Valentine's Day, and it is nearly the two year anniversary of Homestead Brooklyn. So I wanted to share a special episode. If you've been following along on my journey, then you know that my favorite genus in the whole world is Peperomia. And many of you have requested a care video on Peperomia. What I hope to do in this video is give you really good care tips for Peperomia because they're not all created equally and also maybe find a peperomia that is right for you because their care tips do vary. So if you look at this whole table, I actually have them arranged in a certain fashion. If you go from the front of the table to the back, I've tried to include some of the smaller varieties or the ones in smaller pots all the way up to the taller peperomia in the back. If you have a very keen eye, you'll also notice that they're not all peperomia on this table. I have some growing in terrariums, so you'll notice like this begonia or this colincoe or maybe even this dorstenia that are, is kind of poking out. So don't get totally confused. Most of these are actually peperomia on the table. And if you go from my left to my right, you'll notice that there's far more succulent varieties over here and it gets less and less succulent as we go over towards the right and that will come into play as I share a little bit more of the care tips with you. So Peperomia actually grow pantropically which means that they grow above the equator and below the equator in the tropic zone. You could actually even find Peperomia in the United States growing naturally or natively like this Peperomia obtusifolia variegata which is a cultivated variety but this can be found growing in places like Florida although Peperomia are primarily found in Central and South America and also throughout Asia. There's about 1,700 species of Peperomia, and I would not be shocked if there is actually more than that and if we actually find and discover new species only because they are such diminutive species. You'll also notice that some of the larger ones, like this Peperomia polybotria, are even not that large, and that's what makes these such great varieties to grow in the home, partially because they grow in small spaces and oftentimes we're tight and short on space in our homes and our apartments. But as you're hiking in the native environments where peperomias are from, you could often easily overlook them because they're often growing in like little craggy rocks or epiphytically, which means on top of other things like wood or fallen logs. So it's so easy to overlook peperomia, not only indoors, for as indoor houseplants, but also in the wild. So that's why I think that we'll probably be discovering more and more species as we go. One way that we could actually include Peperomia into its own genus is because of the inflorescence or the reproductive parts of the plant. Now out of all of these that I have here, there's only two that are actually flowering. This Peperomia elongata, so you'll see this long spicate flower coming out and also this peperomia blonda which you can see here it has a much more diminutive small spike coming out of here now these are often called rat tail like flowers or catkins and some plants in particular like this peperomia fraseri which is called flowering peperomia which is in this little terrarium has a slightly different flower, as does Peperomia paradoxa, which I actually don't have a version of. It still has that spiky inflorescence, but it has little flowers kind of growing off of it, more parallel to the ground, so it looks a little bit prettier. Now, it was really interesting because I was in the bedroom where this Peperomia elongata grows, and the sun was coming in, and I walked by, and I saw all this pollen dust coming off of the flower in the light. And it just goes to show me that probably peperomia are pollinating through wind pollination, or maybe there's certain flies that come here, but also in some cases self-fertilize. So if they have another flower stalk that's growing on the same plant or a different plant, they could actually fertilize um, themselves. But typically how people actually uh, take and propagate peperomia is not through its pollen or seed, but it's through 
actually taking a leaf cutting. So you'll cut the petiole, which is the little stem that connects to the leaf blade, and you could stick that into some soil, and then from that little leaf and that leaf blade, you'll have a new peperomia that comes out of that. It will be the clonal variety of that particular species, but again, it's very easy to, to actually propagate peperomia, which I think also makes it a great house plant for people. So let's go over the different and succulent nature of peperomia and how you'd actually care for it indoors. So over here, as I mentioned, there are much more succulent leaves and you could see like this peperomia gravelins or this peperomia dolibriformis or this peperomia tetraphylla. These have really hard succulent leaves, hard succulent stems. And typically when we think of succulent plants like Echeveria or Crassula or even some cacti, we think of them growing in these kind of desert-like conditions. And when we think of desert, sometimes our head goes to like, oh, lots of sand or sandy environment. But that's not the case for a lot of peperomias, particularly the more succulent varieties. These are oftentimes growing in xeric or dry conditions, but often under the forest canopy or in craggy rocks. And that's part of what actually makes these really interesting houseplants because they're dealing with these really extreme conditions. So maybe it's super dry and then it hits like a little bit of a rain um, storm. And in some cases, there's been studies in like Peperomia dolibriformis, for instance, where they've actually not watered the plant for 70 days and then they finally water it and it plumps right back up. So these are really resilient house plants if you don't wanna be on top of your plants constantly, I'd get a little bit more of the succulent varieties. Now, if you step over here, you'll start to see Peperomia incana and Peperomia verticillata, which have these fuzzy leaves, which is quite nice. But again, these are plants that are accustomed to drier conditions and probably have face a little bit more harsher sun conditions because it has this white fuzz that probably protects it from the sun, but also protects it from losing its water. And if we start going over here a little bit more, you might recognize some of these plants. This is a Peperomia caparata, and I have a few different versions, pearl and raspberry ice, and also the silver frost one. And it has these ridges or furrows on its leaf. And I can imagine this is something that collects water and then drips it off. So it might face some situations where it's very dry one minute and then it might be very wet the next. So this plant has to deal with some of those types of conditions in that, in that situation. Peperomia, as well as other plants, develop these strategies in order to be able to keep water in the inside. And developing hairs on the leaf is one of those. And also developing this kind of cuticle. So if you look at some of this shiny nature of this Peperomia argyria, for, for instance, or this Peperomia polybotria, or even this Peperomia metallica, you'll notice this kind of sheen. And that is a thin layer of cuticle that actually helps keep the water in. In the case of Dolibriformis, I was mentioning this epidermis and about 80% of the leaf is that epidermis. It's that water storage unit. And that thin layer of cuticle on the top is actually what keeps all of that water in. You take that cuticle off and then that plant will actually dry out quite readily. So that cuticle is very important. These plants do require a little bit of humidity and moisture and they don't need to be in super bright sun. Even though when you think of succulents, you think, oh, I should stick it right in my windowsill and my southern or west western windowsill sill, especially if you're in the northern hemisphere but you don't, these could actually be pulled away. As a matter of fact, this Kimnachii, Pe Peperomia Kimnachii, I'm actually growing a little bit further away from my northeast facing window, and it's growing extremely well. So that just goes to show you another good reason as to why to grow Peperomia in the home is that you don't need such bright light conditions. In many cases, I'm actually growing these further away from my windowsill or even under grow lights. In the case of this Peperomia dolchetii, Peperomia quadrilangularis, and Peperomia tetragona, these are all growing, and as, my, as well this Peperomia viridis, these are all growing under grow lights without any problems whatsoever.
Then as we move over here in the Peperomia metallica, Peperomia viridis, even this uh, Peperomia argia, which is this like watermelon Peperomia, it has these like really beautiful watermelon colorations. And then over here, you have very thin leaves. So Peperomia blonda, Peperomia jamesoniana, Peperomia cubensis, this Peperomia clover cultivar right here, Peperomia rubella. And then the least succulent variety that I have is Peperomia fraseri. And these I would say require a little bit more of like terrarium-like conditions. So they like a little bit more humidity. It's probably better growing them in glass and they have a certain succulent nature, but they're a little bit more frail. So if you would like a Peperomia that you need to take care for a little bit less, you don't need to have to water as often, then I would say stick a little bit more to the succulent varieties. However, in my experience, no Peperomia really likes to have its roots too wet. So I tend to go with a much more well-draining mix of soil. So you'll see this soil that I mixed here. It's some cacti soil with some extra perlite, which is puffed volcanic stone. And I have some bark in there and actually a little bit more clay. And this will actually drain much better than if you're just using something that's like really peaty, for instance. If you have a real peat heavy mix, then oftentimes the water will just kind of stay in the soil. And if you ever have to repot your peperomia, you probably want to do it with a little bit more of a well draining mix. I haven't had to repot my peperomia very often, however, because one of the benefits of having this diminutive epiphytic plant, it is, it doesn't mind being a little bit root bound. And I, after growing peperomia for years, I've never actually seen any of the roots coming out of the holes of my planter pots. So I think that they're actually quite happy growing in such limited conditions in this case. Now, there are some peperomia that I've had to struggle with some time. The Argeria plant, or the watermelon peperomia, which has these really beautiful stripes and colorations, I've lost on one occasion. And I just then keep it in its own plastic pot because sometimes I just get really excited and I want to plant the plant into a pot right away, a better looking pot. But sometimes it's better just keeping it in its own nursery pot and putting a cash pot uh, or cash po it's called around it and then you could just deal with it that way and you don't have to actually deal with transplanting it again let's just recap on what makes peperomia awesome and one is it's a small plant so if you're short on space in your home then this is a plant for you the other thing is that there is a range of peperomia from going really succulent to less succulent. And the ones that are a little bit more succulent are slightly easier, I think, in my opinion, to take care of because you don't have to water them all that often. And also peperomia don't need to be in such high light. You give a little bit more of a higher light condition for some of the succulent ones, but they don't really need it. And in fact, they might actually even dry out if you give it too high of light conditions. So having a more diffuse light or medium light or even under grow lights and these plants will grow entirely fine. And as you'll see in my next episode, there's just such a range and a variety of peperomia that there is definitely one out there that you'll fall in love with. Did this video help build your confidence caring for peps? If so, give a shout out in the comments below and be sure to stay tuned for my next video showcasing some of my collection. Support more videos like this by subscribing to the channel and be sure to click on the notifications bell so you know when the next video drops. And stay tuned to more news on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com, follow my daily journey on Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn, and dive more deeply into houseplant cultivation and care at houseplantmasterclass.com.